Okay, well, today, this is lesson three on the art of uh, effective praying, and uh, it's the praying with the words of imagination. Um, so, you know, lesson one was creative partnership. We're in a creative partnership with God. We are created by God to be like Him. Therefore, we need to expect that we would be creative, and that's in every area. And that would include communication with Him, because prayer is just simply, it is communication on many levels. Now, last week, uh, we talked about think like a ninja. And I got some pushback on that on online. Um, because the person said that, you know, they thought my heart was right, but absolutely disagreed with it. We should ever be thinking like a ninja because they're Buddhists and so forth and so on. Aww. Well, the the issue the issue is <laughs> that the point that I was making is that they they know who they are, and they know they're special, and they have a particular uh, objective in life, and that's to be protectors, et cetera, et cetera. And they're very active at it, and they work at it. I'm not talking about affirming Buddhism in any way. And so I'm saying that in this lesson that will go online too. So um, words of imagination. We think in terms of words being symbolic vocal expressions of thoughts that we have. It conveys our thoughts to others in languages that we understand. Words, you know, that's what words are, we, things we say. When we think of prayer, we think of understandable words, saying understandable words to God, and having him say understandable words back to us if he, in fact, is communicating with us. And if we are not using words that express our beliefs or desires, we aren't actually praying. However, and this is a big however, that we need to think about, God conveys his thoughts and wisdom using images. That's a big part of his words. As they come to us in dreams, they come to us in visions, they come to us in inner pictures. They, Jesus taught in parables, which evoked images, imagery. And uh, so God speaks his thoughts, and part of his words are image words. When we think of prayer... That's how we think of it, is understandable words. But I mentioned God speaks in images, Jesus taught in parables, and Paul prayed that the hearts of our, uh, our hearts would be enlightened. That's in Ephesians 1.17. And enlightened is the Greek word where we get the word photograph. And so he's saying that we will get to know God better by the photographs in our spirit that he sends us, that then we can pursue him on and pursue understanding the depth of those photographs and what his images are saying to us. Now, our problem is that we've been trained to believe that superior thoughts are rational thoughts. That's our scientific culture. And so, therefore, if it's not something that we are rationally reasoning through, and presenting a position on that is logical and rationally thought out, then it's of inferior quality and maybe it's even make-believe. And we are overcoming that whole thing of imagination is not valuable. You're, that's your, your play, it's play thing. Kids imagine. That's make-believe. But the fact of the matter is, is that God used imagination as one of his most powerful communication tools. And what I am actually going, am emphasizing today is the fact that it's a two-way street of effectiveness. Um, God often communicates to us through imagination, not through words. We sometimes, that's one of the ways, will have a thought that we can put words on that gives us an impression that's a thought. And those things are one of the ways that God does by his spirit communicate. However, that's not the only way and is not actually the primary way. In fact, think about it. Think about your everyday life. You think in pictures all of the time. 
Um, when we ask for directions to go someplace, we try to visualize where we're going, where we've been. Now, of course, what imagination does is, on one hand, it does require that we've had experience with those visible things before, so that, and I believe, either our spirit or the Holy Spirit, or sometimes the demonic spirit, can call up those visuals. But there are times when God will put visuals in our minds that we haven't thought of in the same way that he's conveying it. One great example is in the book of Revelation where God showed John the end times and he showed him what I believe he saw were motorcycle riders, helicopters with lasers, but the only thing he, because it says stingers in their tails, locusts with stingers in their tails. Well, I believe that what he was looking at in vision form is something he'd never seen before. So he described it with the imagery that he knew. And so that, sometimes that'll happen. And that's why a lot of times the visions that we may get or the inner re pictures that we'll get that we really quickly dismiss because we did, they just make no sense at all are something if we'd stop on them and we'd ask the Holy Spirit to clarify those things for us, then it would be something that is... Uh, uh, a powerful communication. He, he's communicating something to us. But, okay. Um, we need to purposely be relying upon the Holy Spirit, of course. But here's, here's one of the things that we have problem with. If I were to say to you, all right, I want you to pray. I want you to imagine something and just hold that in your heart before the Lord. You would say, well, I'm not going to make up an image and call that my prayer. But you do it all the time with words. God doesn't give you specific words to pray, does he? Sometimes he quickens those things. But it is totally, totally righteous to simply create imagination of what you want something to look like and put that before God and let that be your prayer. Now, I had this as an experience. Some of you have heard this story before. When I was pastoring in Rock Island, there was a gentleman back, was back in the 80s, back when dirt was still new. <laughs> it seems like it's that long ago. But in, in some ways, it seems like it was just yesterday. But there was a gentleman in the congregation, and he was just a sourpuss. I mean, during worship time, he just... He had stand with everybody else because he didn't want to be different than everybody else. But he just stood there, sourpuss. It was a problem for his wife. You know, it embarrassed her and everything. But he was just kind of dead. So I was on a way to a speaking engagement one Saturday. And I said, I want to pray for Bill. Bill, Lord, would you just touch Bill's heart? And, and, and would you, I don't remember all the words I prayed. And I heard the Lord speak back now with words or an impression. So what would it look like if I answered your prayer? Oh, what would it look like? Well, Bill would have his hands raised, a smile on his face, looking to like he was in worship. And he said, well, then pray that. And so basically speaking, I didn't put very many words on it. I just held that vision before God as my release of faith for Bill. Now, on Sunday mornings, back in those days, my wife and I used to sit up on the platform. You know, we were real religious. <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of times I had my eyes closed as we're all worshiping and everything. And at one point, I opened my eyes and I looked out on the congregation, and there was Bill with his hands raised and a smile on his face. Now, that was a very quick confirmation to me that there is power in praying images, laying images before God. What we are saying, and, and this bears repeating again for people that are even listening to it online, Kathy, is when there, it is legitimate to pray in images, place an image before God. People have trouble with that because they don't think that's legitimate because we're so enamored with logical words. But the fact of the matter is, is that we can actually put images before God, and that's a language. 
because he speaks to us primarily in images. And so it's, it's, it's another way of actually being very effective in prayer without having to know all of the words to say. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever, and I know the answer is rhetorical, have you ever had a situation you just don't know how to pray about it? You, like, you know what, it, what you would like to have happen, but you don't know how to say the right words or confess the right scripture verses or whatever. And you, so therefore you don't pray because you don't know what to pray. But you know what it would look like if it was answered without any big deal. So do it. So do it. Now I suggest that you receive the aid of the Holy Spirit in that process that to yourself you start to pray in the Spirit and then you paint a picture in your mind of what it would look like if this prayer was answered. And you, by faith, tell them, I'm placing this before you as a prayer, Lord. And I'm releasing it. I'm releasing it to you as, in a sense of authority, of the name of Jesus. I mean, there's nothing at all wrong with adding words like saying, and so therefore, in Jesus' name, I decree that vision. I decree what I'm seeing right now because that is the way it would look if it responded to your word and to your kingdom. So I'm going to paint images of positive answers. See, the problem that we have a lot of the times is we are praying words against a negative image that we have inside. And we're hoping that that doesn't happen, but that's strong inside of us. That's really, in a way, what we're anticipating will happen. So this is really kind of a new way of thinking that almost seems too good to be true. But Kristen, it's really powerful. I, I've had God prove that to me on several occasions. That's a real important way to pray when you're praying for people for healing. When you pray for them, and you've probably heard this before, pray for them and have in your heart what it would look like as that prayer that you're desiring would be answered. And you focus on that. You don't focus on what their sickness is that's in their body, what you see in front of you as you are praying. And if you've got to close your eyes, fine. But also, we in the last few weeks have also demolished the idea, or I don't know if the right word is demolish, but you don't have to use a lot of words when you pray for people for healing or for miracles without, uh, and yet it will still happen. Uh, One of the visual sources that I have used, and I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but it's a man named Peter Cabrera. You you went to his school. Is that right? He's a real deal, isn't he? He And stuff happens, doesn't it? And it's reproducible in anybody. It's not just Peter, right? Because he happens to be there. His whole thing is a mindset. It's It's a mindset. Who you are in Christ. It's knowing who you are in Christ. Thinking like a ninja. (laughs) <laughs> a Christian ninja a Christian warrior a Christian yeah. ninja warrior yeah. yeah identity in Christ and then everything comes out after that or from that and yeah and yeah flows. and it does and so it's it's just amazing when you watch some of his videos in fact people are listening to it right to this lesson go on YouTube and just look for Peter Cabrera he's got several years where the videos up are demonstrations <laughs> and uh, C A B R E R A, I think, yeah. Junior. Yeah, and uh, there, he's got several teachings up too. I mean, where he just talks about your identity in Christ and all those things. And really, he's got several other people that have joined along with him. That other also a man named Tom, something I can't think of his Fisher. Tom. Maybe it's Tom Fisher. He's got some videos or, up uh, too. Tom and Loud. Tom Loud. That's who it is. He's from yeah, from the state of Washington. State of Washington. Yeah, right. So, um, you know, it's just amazing where, you know, say a word, and yet still, something's still happening. Blew me away when he used the thing in the soup kitchen of a plastic spoon. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember seeing that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, some of them are wild, but he's making a point. Hold the spoon. Well, he's, anyhow, it's... 
yeah. really the ob, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's yeah, but a lot of times it's it's what whatever we can do to get people to release their faith. I think sometimes also just touching people is a point of contact that releases their faith. That's why Oral Roberts would tell people to touch the TV. Well, that sound to an evangelical crowd, that sound wild. Come on, I grew up in that. But the fact of the matter is, is that there is a point of being able to release faith on your side. So, you know, as you begin to explain some of these things, um, you know, we, we just come up, we allow the Holy Spirit to give us creative ways. Let me say it again. Let's be striving for greater creativity in our prayers, in our praying, and our ministry. Now, um, the last thing, we're just about out of time for the lesson. The last thing is back this summer... I was praying about something. I was praying about, actually, I was praying about conditions, certain conditions in the country. And um, I have felt the Holy Spirit tell me, impress me. Colleen SWAT. And I thought, well, what is SWAT? And SWAT is spirit, world, Angelic troops. Spirit, world, angelic troops. So it's a play on SWAT. But spirit, world, angelic troops. Call in SWAT. Because you see, the scriptures really tell us, I know that the New Age has messed it up and it has caused some really weird teachings on angels. But the fact of the matter is, is that God gave us angels, not just to populate heaven, because he thought it would be a cool thing to have a bunch of angels around, but as our assistants on earth. And we can really partner with them. In fact, Jesus on the cross said, I could have asked the Father and he'd sent a lot of angels to take care of this, but I'm not going to do that because I need to die on the cross for, your, for you. But so we can be taking advantage of calling in angelic troops to do work for us in intercession. In fact, we will be doing that, and I'll explain how a little bit later out there. But what would it look like? Different people are going to see it different ways. But you identify something, such as just put in your imagination police officers or a riot which is not tough to imagine right now, is it? And imagine, say in Jesus' name, I call in angelic, I call in SWAT, heavenly SWAT, and imagine angels coming to deal with that situation. Problem is, we've become so rational in our thinking that we go, I can't see how that would do anything. Well, then why are you praying about the situations at all? Do you think your words are going to solve the situation? Do you think the power of your words when you intercede for the troubled times and just by you saying the right thing at the right time, that's going to take care of anything? Well, yeah, I, yeah, I think we, it all adds up. Okay, what, since we have understood, as we are teaching in this lesson, that God uses, and we can use imagery to speak his word. We can see what it would look like if those words came to pass, were answered, then why not? Why not? So, think about that. What would it look like? Imagine different kinds of things that you need or situations in your life or if you called in SWAT, if what you were desiring it to look like, if you could start seeing it by faith with your imagination and then releasing that as a fact, recognizing that that is how God communicates more than any other way is through imagery to us. In dreams and visions and so forth, as I've already said, he already said that he enlightens us to get to know God better in, in Ephesians 1 by giving us 
photographs. That's the Greek word that's used where we get photograph. Back in 117, that he would enlighten. The word enlighten is the same word as we get photograph. So God speaks in imagery. We can speak in imagery. And it really will make your prayers more effective because you all have a basic idea of how you would want certain aspects of what you're praying for to look when there is an answer. Then start looking at it and allowing that to be released by faith. Amen? Amen. All right. And that will do the lesson for today.